In this lesson, we're going to take a look at Elastic Cloud Compute and also Elastic Beanstalk. Some of the prerequisites or things that you should know before you start out with this lesson, some knowledge of basic concepts around servers and networking, such as storage, compute memory, and networking would be very helpful before viewing this lesson. And with that, I'll switch over to the Amazon Web Services website, which I have logged into using an account that I previously created. Here on the AWS Management Console, you can see all of the different services that are available with Amazon Web Services. As I said, the focus for this lesson will be on EC2 and Elastic Beanstalk. Let's look at EC2 first, which is found under the Compute area within the Amazon Web Services Management Console. Clicking on EC2 reveals the EC2 instances that I have under this account. Right now you can see that I have zero running instances. Clicking on that shows the various instances that I have in EC2. Right now there are none, so we can launch an instance. An instance is essentially a virtual machine inside of AWS. And with a virtual machine, you can do whatever really you'd like with a computer out on the internet, be it host a website, host a blog, run an application, or do really whatever. So with this, launching an instance is very simple in EC2. We can select from any number of different operating systems that are available. For instance, I'll select the version of Linux for Amazon. And we can find the different sizes of instances that are available. For instance, there's the T2 Micro. That includes one virtual CPU, as you can see I'm mousing over here. Also a gigabyte of memory, the different storage types that are available. And you can see all the different options that are available, all the different sizes that are available for Amazon Web Services instances as I scroll down. For this demonstration, I'll just be choosing the basic free tier T2 Micro and clicking on Next Configure Instance Details. That reveals the number of instances that I want to deploy here, and I'll deploy one instance. I can choose the different networks that I might want to have available and where I would want that to be in a subnet. Which IP, if I want to auto assign a public IP, so in other words, if I want to access this machine from the internet, I would select enable here or use subnet setting, which is set to enable. If I didn't want to access this from the internet, I could select disable here. And I might do that in instances where I only want my other virtual machines or my other EC2 instances to access this instance. In other words, if I didn't want the public internet to get access to this machine or this EC2 instance, I could disable the auto assignment of a public IP. For this, I would like to enable, and it's as simple as clicking on review and launch, which I've done there, and clicking again on launch. I can then choose a security key pair or I can proceed without a key pair. For this demonstration, I'll proceed without a key pair and acknowledge that I won't be able to connect to this instance unless I already know the password for that Amazon machine image or AMI. And I'll click on launch instance. My instance is now launching and we can go back to the Amazon Web Services console and click on EC2 again. And we see if we click on running instances, right now it does say that there are zero running instances, and that's because Amazon Web Services is currently launching that instance. We can see that that state now is running right here, and we have a running instance with the following public IP address for our EC2 instance. If we wanted to change things with EC2 with this instance, we could either deploy a new one or make changes to the limits on this EC2 instance. Switching gears now back to the console in Amazon Web Services, looking under Deployment and Management, we see Elastic Beanstalk. That's the other area that I want to look at for this demonstration. Elastic Beanstalk, as you can see below, is the AWS application container. Using Elastic Beanstalk, you can launch an application in the cloud. So if you didn't want to manage an EC2 instance or didn't have the in-house expertise to manage a virtual machine like you would need to with an EC2 instance, you can use Elastic Beanstalk. And as you can see here, we have different platforms that are pre-configured for us to launch with. So if we wanted to run Internet Information Services, we could do that with IIS, a Node.js instance. We could run PHP, Python, Ruby, Tomcat, and several others. For this demonstration, I'll choose PHP and click on Launch Now. And as you can see, the environment is currently loading. Clicking on Monitor gives us additional details. 
and we'll click on View Events. And we can see here, based on the information, that we are launching an Amazon S3 storage bucket for our environment data. And the task called Create Environment is starting. Once this is launched, we would be able to use Elastic Beanstalk to deploy a PHP application. And the advantage here, again, is that I don't need to manage all of the details or the security or really anything with the machine itself. All I'm worried about is deploying my application. Clicking back on the Elastic Beanstalk console reveals the all applications, and you can see here that I've launched a default environment, and it's gray, so it's currently launching. If it was green, it would be fully launched. We'll go back to the console. You can see all of the other options that are available with Amazon Web Services. In future demonstrations, we will be looking at some of these other options and services available.